friends, family, and internet strangers, Stephanie here with a new What's for Dinner video. I've got several easy, budget-friendly meals to share with you, some great dinner ideas, and then at the end of the video, I also have my favorite Thanksgiving side, one that will never change. I will never change my recipe for stuffing, so make sure you stay tuned for that at the end of the video. Let's get into it. First up is a Parmesan Ranch pork chop and Parmesan Ranch potatoes. Starting out with the potatoes because they do take a little longer. While my oven was preheating, I melted some butter right on the sheet pan there. And then to that, I am adding some seasoned salt, some ranch seasoning mix. I just have the bottle of it. And then a little bit of pepper and Parmesan cheese. I'm going to mix that up until it forms a little bit of a paste. I have done a similar potato to this in one of my recent what's for dinner videos leading up to this one. So you can do this with so many different types of seasoning, but essentially it all boils down to the same where you make a paste out of your butter, your cheese, and your seasoning. And then you put your potatoes that you have scored flesh side down after you cut them in half or into quarters if they're really large potatoes. But I've just got those little potatoes and I am going to do that with all of these. This is also super easy to make in a small portion, which is great for me cooking for one. I just used a small amount of butter and a small amount of each of the seasonings. And I used three of these little potatoes cut in half so that I wouldn't have too many. These do reheat well, but I knew I wasn't going to want the leftovers of them because they are better when they are fresh. Although when you do reheat them, if you don't do them in the air fryer or the oven and you do them in the microwave, just dip them in a ranch and they still taste good. To the top of them, I am brushing a little bit of olive oil over the top. You could also use melted butter for this too, but it is nice and easy to just drizzle olive oil over the top. And then I'm adding more of that ranch seasoning and a little bit more of the seasoned salt. It's gonna go on top of here. And then I'm also going to add a little bit more of the pepper on top. And then for my pork chops, after I get my potatoes in the oven, I start working on my pork chops because the potatoes take longer. I do give them a head start. For my pork chop, I'm adding pretty much the same thing that I added to the potatoes. I'm adding seasoned salt, pepper, ranch seasoning, and Parmesan cheese. I am pushing this down into both sides. You could also add olive oil or melted butter to this, but I found I didn't actually need it. It still tasted delicious and everything still stuck to it without having that oil on there. Really, I think I just forgot to put oil on it, but it still tasted fine. This was very good. So I do make sure to season both sides of this. And then once my potatoes have been cooking, I cooked them at, I believe, 400 degrees for 40 minutes total. I put the pork chop in with them about 20 minutes into that cooking time because these are pretty thick pork chops. So they do take a decent amount of time, but you just wanna make sure they are fully cooked. So go with the correct cooking time for however large, I can't talk anymore, uh, however large your pork chops are. So mine are those really thick Costco ones. I love these because it is pretty hard to dry them out. When you use the smaller ones, sometimes they can dry out a little faster if you don't take them out of the oven fast enough. That's a little bit easier to manage with these large thick cut pork chops, but use whatever pork you like. This would also be really good on a pork tenderloin or on the thin cut as well would also be tasty but look how good that turned out and it did get a nice little brown crust even without adding any oil to it and then turning over my potatoes to show you how gorgeous those looked and then my roasted veggies were in a separate video so y'all this meal was from several weeks ago uh, but this was delicious and I will link that sides video down below if you want to see how I did the carrots and the brussels sprouts Next up is a very simple chicken Caesar salad. I had a friend in town the weekend of this one and we had been eating out a lot. So when we went to Costco on a Sunday afternoon, we decided for dinner since we had had kind of a bigger lunch, but we knew we would still be hungry for dinner. We just got 
one of the Costco Caesar salad mixes and a rotisserie chicken. And we both ate off of that. I added some bacon crumbles into mine to make it a bacon chicken Caesar salad. And then I ate off of the chicken for the whole week after that. And that includes this chicken and rice that I made right here. I started out by sauteing up some veggies. I had some onion to use up and some green bell pepper. I threw those in a pan with some olive oil and then added this adobo seasoning. This is the Badia adobo seasoning, but I got it on sale at, I believe it was Burlington is where I got this one, but you can usually find some of those seasonings at Home Goods and Marshalls or in the grocery store, but sometimes they're cheaper when you get them at those Home Goods type stores. So I simply sauteed the veggies until they were to my desired doneness. And while I was doing that, I made a little bag of that Nor Spanish rice to be the base of my rice bowl. You can also cook your own rice. I added a little bit of water to my veggies. I do like mine to be very, very soft. I want them to be nice and cooked down. And then once they got to that, I added in some of that rotisserie chicken. Now, since this was a chicken and rice bowl with the adobo seasoning, I added more adobo seasoning to that. You could make it even more flavorful by cooking the chicken in the adobo seasoning, cooking it from raw or from frozen. But I really, really got my money's worth with that Costco rotisserie chicken. I had it on the salad, I had it in this. And then I also showed in last week's cozy fall what's for dinner, I did chicken and stuffing. That was also with this same thing. I had leftovers of the chicken and stuffing. I had leftovers of this. So I believe all together I got six or seven servings of meals out of that rotisserie chicken. And for me, that was a lot because I only had a friend eating with me that one time. So this chicken really went a long way with my dinners and with my lunches for the week. So once I've got that cooked and my rice is all cooked, which I just did according to the package instructions, I add my chicken over the top of the rice. And now this next part was the disappointing part. And so when I had the leftovers, I did not do this. This is a jarred queso and I had thrown it in the microwave a little bit of it so that I could put it over this and it would be nice and warm. This is the on the border Monterey Jack queso. I did not like it at all. And I wished I had left it off of here. So I will not be purchasing that one again. It just tasted very jarred queso to me. And some you can get away with, they don't taste that. I don't even like to say they taste salty, even though I know sodium is salt, they taste more like preservative sodium than just salty. So I was not a fan of that. But overall, other than that, I enjoyed this. I also added cheese and sour cream on top. So my leftovers of this were actually better because I knew to leave the queso off. Now this video has some hits, but it also has some misses. If you've been around for a while, you know, I don't use jarred spaghetti sauce very often. And when I do, I never use frozen meatballs. Now, there is nothing wrong with using jarred sauce and frozen meatballs, but for me who grew up with homemade of both of those things and also regularly make the homemade, sometimes it can just be very disappointing. But I was really wanting spaghetti and meatballs on this night, and I did not have any in my freezer. Since I've moved, I have not yet stocked my freezer with my homemade sauce and my homemade meatballs. The sauce itself was not that bad. It was really the meatballs that were disappointing because when I think of spaghetti and meatballs, this is not the meatballs I think of. These are the meatballs I think of for like a meatball sub or using these with a teriyaki sauce on them or some other recipe, but not in spaghetti and meatballs. So if you use these for spaghetti and meatballs, again, no judgment, use what you like, but this was not what I wanted and I left this meal fe feeling very disappointed. So safe to say I will be 
stocking up my freezer with my homemade sauce and meatballs, most likely over Thanksgiving weekend, since I will have several days off of work, I am going to do that. If you are new here and you haven't seen how I make my homemade spaghetti sauce and meatballs, it will likely be in one of my upcoming videos once I do that. So I simply doctored this up with a little bit of Italian seasoning and a little bit of garlic powder, and then I let it cook for about half an hour to give those meatballs time to cook through and also to give them time to really soak up some of that sauce and then served this over spaghetti with some Parmesan cheese on top and a little slice of Texas toast that I threw in the air fryer. And the big winner for this video, this is my Italian stuffing. This is my one non-negotiable, will not ever change it side for Thanksgiving. This is something I make every year, even if it's not on Thanksgiving itself, which these past few years it hasn't been on Thanksgiving itself since I've been traveling a lot on Thanksgiving the past few years. Also, if you have not seen my Thanksgiving Thanksgiving video from last year with my trip to Utah with one of my best friends. That is one of my favorite videos I have ever done on this channel. So I will leave that in the description box if you are new here and want to check that out. It was just a very fun trip and I loved how the video turned out and sometimes I will watch it back for those fun memories when I start to miss my best friend who still lives in California. So I do have a fully explained video of how to make this Italian stuffing, but it is two years old and I know at the point when I posted it, my channel did not have nearly as many subscribers as it has now. So if you wanna go back and see the fully explained how to make Italian stuffing, I will have that video linked in the description box below. And then in this one, I'll just give you kind of the overview. So I started out with sausage, two rolls of the mild sausage because I make a ton of this. This is one thing that I never make in small quantities, I will always make it with a lot. I did not add the full 12 cups of onions and celery, sliced thin, that you saw a few seconds ago. I added most of it, and that's because this cooks down a lot, so it seems like a lot. I added about nine out of the 12 cups of this, and then froze the rest to use for soups later on in the winter. I cooked my sausage first and then added those celery and onions and I let this simmer until those are really, really soft. And you've seen at this point multiple rounds of poultry seasoning going in. That's the only seasoning that I add to this. And it looks like a lot. It is almost the entire jar of poultry seasoning. When my dad made it, he used these little yellow boxes I believe it's Bell's poultry seasoning is what he would use, but for me it's easier to find the Aldi one. So we use a ton, but that's because that is the only seasoning that is flavoring all of this bread. This is three loaves of bread. I use two loaves of white bread and one loaf of wheat bread. And then one of the only things I do differently from how my dad did it, he always fully soaked this bread and then we would squeeze it and wring out all of the excess water and then drain it off and it would be really goopy and it was kind of fun to do that as a child. As an adult, uh, I like to use gloves. My dad always said that the secret ingredient was the dirt underneath the fingernails, but I have germ issues, so I use gloves. And then you're gonna just get that to a nice moist consistency. I do leave the bread out, cubed up for a while, but then you do rehydrate it. And then to that, I've got my finished sausage, celery, and onion goes in, and then to soak up any excess moisture, I add a package of the plain herb seasoned croutons you get at the grocery store. And then you wanna make sure that you give a little bit of time for that sausage, celery, and onion mixture to cool down so that you are not burning your hands. I'm impatient, I had to keep taking breaks because I didn't let it cool down, so I did use a spoon a little bit, but you do wanna do the bulk of the mixing of this with your hands to make sure everything gets well combined. Mine was not quite the consistency I wanted, so I did add a little bit more water to that, and then it turned out to be perfect. This is not one of those separated chunks of bread, visible types of stuffing. This is very much casserole-like when it is all done. 
but when this is fully mixed, you can leave it just like this and bake it that way. That is what we refer to as regular stuffing in my family. And normally we would do half and half. We would do one big pan of regular and one big pan of Italian. But for our Italian stuffing, we get capicol, pepperoni, and provolone cheese. And I go to the Italian deli for this and ask them to slice it about a quarter of an inch. And then you dice it up and add it in. And then I did one small pan for myself of the regular. And then the small pan and large pan of the Italian stuffing were for one small pan to bring to work so my coworkers could try it. And then the large pan went to a potluck at church. I bake it covered at 375 for about an hour covered in foil and then i uncover it for the last half an hour and a look at that melty cheese in there this is delicious and it is the one thing i will never change for thanksgiving thank you so much for watching this video i hope y'all enjoy it and if you did i hope you give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more content and i hope everyone who celebrates has a wonderful thanksgiving this week